riding out of Pittsburgh today, everyone. We're heading to a little town called Indiana, Pennsylvania. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. There's our sign for Indiana. We're making headway. We have arrived. Welcome to Indiana, Pennsylvania. The reason we came today is because one of the finest actors of the American cinema and one heck of a war hero was born and raised in this town and we're gonna go to his museum. We're gonna go see the Jimmy Stewart Museum. The man we know from Philadelphia story, It's a Wonderful Life, Harvey, all those great Alfred Hitchcock movies, Vertigo. Let's go see this great museum. They have quite a bit of his memorabilia. And this should be great because his family was very, very big in this town. His father owned a hardware store for over a half century and even when it burned down in 1929, he rebuilt it. Well, this town's big enough, they have their own Indiana University of Pennsylvania here. But Jimmy did not attend there because he went to Princeton. Kind of a cool old town up here. Here we found Jimmy Stewart Boulevard. So we're right here at the Indiana County Courthouse and they have a couple little memorials here, one for James Nance Jr. You can see right here, James Nance Jr. was an accomplished athlete from Indiana County. He excelled in football and wrestling at Indiana High School and Syracuse University. He was the first African-American two-time heavyweight wrestling champion in high school and the NCAA. Jim was a running back for the Boston Patriots, 1965 to 71, AFL rushing leader, 1966, AFL all Pro 1966 67. He was inducted into the Indiana County Sports Hall of Fame in 1983, the Pennsylvania Wrestling Hall of Fame 1980, and the New England Patriots Hall of Fame in 2009. And then over here, you can see a wonderful statue of Jimmy Stewart. Dedicated May 21st, 1983 on Jimmy's 75th birthday. He was very close to his parents. His father was, like I said, he ran the hardware store in town, but he was really close to his father and his father, well, his whole um, male lineage had served in the military. And so when World War I broke out, even though he was a pillar of the community and ran the hardware store and everything, he enlisted to go fight. And like all of their ancestors, and, uh, and even Jimmy also was drafted a year before World War II. And he was already at that time um, a practicing pilot on his own. He had his own plane and everything before he was ever in the uh, in the war, but that's what he taught. He taught flying and did like over 20 missions himself. And when he ended up coming out after his four year stint, he put in his contract that none of the studios could talk about his, his military career and any kind of promotion for him. He basically wanted the whole, both worlds separate. Now let's go check out the Jimmy Stewart Museum. So here it is, tucked in between Indiana Free Library, Jimmy Stewart Museum. You can see it says here that the legendary actor was born and raised in this town. During his lifelong career, 1932-91, Jimmy Stewart achieved fame on stage, screen, and TV. He won an Academy Award for his role in The Philadelphia Story. Other films included Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, It's a Wonderful Life, and Harvey. He flew 20 combat missions in World War II, rose to Brigadier General, 
Air Force Reserve and received the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1985. Let's go enjoy this beautiful museum. So this is great. As you come up to the elevator, there's a little marker here that says on this site was located the hardware store owned and operated by Alexander Stewart, father of Jimmy Stewart. And Jimmy was actually a pretty accomplished accordion player because the fair used to come to town twice a year and a guy traveling with the fair came into the hardware store and needed some money and sold his accordion and Jimmy ended up with the accordion. <laughs> eventually ended up on a stamp. In the elevator, they have this great picture of Jimmy during his service. So I've kind of walked through this museum and it is amazing how much stuff they have here. From old movie posters and just everything from his career, including original film canisters. His. And look, it says Chasen's. <laughs> we'll get to that. So once you come into here, this is really cool. You have his actual costume from the Glenn Miller story. Isn't that amazing? I remember hearing an interview with his co-star saying, when he put on the glasses and was conducting, you thought it was Glenn Miller. And over here, of course, we have Harvey. Here is his actual script from Harvey. And he even much later reprised his role on Broadway many years later because he loved the part so much. Now here's the wing of the museum dedicated to his Western career. And here you have one of his actual director's chairs. There's his costume from the night passenger. Gloria was his wife. Here's a couple of statues of Jimmy in his Western career. And this is saying that Jimmy Stewart and the Duke, John Wayne, were cousins by marriage, and it shows how. Now that is his costume from Winchester 73 that he made with my pal Shelley Winters. It says, Stewart began looking for the proper cowboy hat for the filming of 73. With his thin, lean face, finding the right hat took some doing. Stuart was not only very practical, he was also a bit superstitious, and he wore the same gray, sweat-stained hat in the falling westerns. Winchester 73, Bend of the River, The Naked Spur, The Far Country, The Man from Laramie, Night Passage, Two Roads Together. The hat became his trademark. Now this is from an American tale, Fievel Goes West, because Jimmy Stewart did the voice. And then right here you see this Flight of the Phoenix commemoration. It's actually a uh, like a wing, and everybody has signed it. You can see Peter Finch and George Kennedy and all kinds of names on there. And here's a picture. them all with it. Now check this out. They actually have a lot of his awards. The actual real awards. American Cinema Award. 
him and Whitney Houston. Here's his Grammy nomination for his album, Jimmy Stewart and his poems and the metal. And yes, that is Jimmy Stewart's actual tuxedo that he's wearing in this photo over here. And it's the only piece of his clothing in this museum that's not in a case yet. Jimmy Stewart lived on Roxbury Drive in Beverly Hills for many, many years with his family. And he actually died in that house. And when they ended up tearing the house down, that's the front door from the house. His family has been gracious enough to donate many of these things for the museum so fans can see them. There you can see them standing in front of that door, the whole family. He had twin daughters, but they weren't identical twins, you can see. <laughs> That's great. Now check this out. We're gonna head down this hallway, and she was telling me that he had two dogs that he named after his daughters because once his daughters were gone, he needed somebody to yell at. <laughs> great. And then here is his office from California. They literally moved the whole office here. Now let me show you some of the cool things they pointed out. For one thing, he was lifelong friends with Ronald Reagan here. So Ronald Reagan has given him an award. He was honored at the uh, presidential gala. And then here, they moved his auto pen machine from his house. That's what that is, that big giant thing for signing autographs through the mail. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? When I knew Shelly Winter, she said she had three girls on staff that when she was in her height would sign her autographs and mail them back for fans. Bel Air Country Club, golf bag for Jimmy Stewart. And then up here in that frame, that is his green briefcase. Then check this out. His chair and his Bob Hope stool. And then look, his personal family photos of his beloved pets and his university diplomas and then there's his desk how cool is that And back there are some photos of he and his wife Gloria and their daughters. And then they actually have his private plane <laughs> here in town. And they were going to do an unveiling and everything and a whole big deal about it. And then COVID happened, so sadly they didn't get to do it. There's Jimmy standing there with that grandfather clock that we were just looking at. Now this wall shows all of his family, like showing him with his wife, and his wife Gloria had two, two sons before they were together, and he adopted them as his own. Now check this out. When you go back here, 
They actually have his one of the beds from his bedroom. He had two beds in his bedroom. One of them, his father paid someone to lengthen the bed for Jimmy, and that one was going to be auctioned off. And apparently the, the bids got really high, and a man who just really, really wanted it, wanted the bed, wrote a letter to the man that owned it and just implored to him to take a lower bid and sell it to him, and the guy did. So they were telling me that the man that owns that bed now was in here and was showing him pictures of the bed that he owns and you can actually, if you look at the headboard right here, you can match up in this photo, Jimmy resting his head up against the headboard exactly like it. The bed from his room. And they have the model here because he had an affinity for model planes. He and Henry Fonda used to build model planes together. These pictures of the model plane directions were from his room. And Jimmy was an avid Boy Scout. Loved, loved, loved the Boy Scouts. And they even honored him when he came back for visits. And those are his personal Boy Scout awards with his name on. Now check this out. This is his actual booth from Chasen's. Chasen's in Beverly Hills, they got his booth and brought it here. And they said, if you look underneath the table, it says table to Jimmy Stewart, and it has <laughs> gum under the table from where his two daughters used to rest their gum. <laughs> Isn't that great? With an actual menu and everything. He used to dine there very often, with Ronald Reagan, as a matter of fact. And there's he and Gloria and some of their friends dining at Jason's. There you can see where they hung his childhood photo. Now this is all dedicated to his military history. And they have his actual military uniforms here on display. That alone to me is just so worth coming. This might be one of the best, if not the best, a museum to any Hollywood person that I've been to yet. And those are all of his actual medals. He's receiving that one in that photo. And then this is the air medal. And the distinguished flying cross. It's Jimmy's rucksack from when he was in the military. And then here, we have his Brigadier General uniform that he, he was promoted ranks when he was in the reserves. It's a military tuxedo. He was 6'3", so he was a pretty tall guy. That's what I am, I'm 6'3". But he had a problem because when he was drafted, he was too thin. They made him gain weight before he could serve. It's his fighter squadron. That's showing all the actors who were in the war effort. There's a certificate of retirement from the Air Force. Colonel Jimmy is back. And then sadly, his son, who, well, technically stepson, but he always viewed him as his son, as you should. Ronald McLean was killed in battle, or while serving three months after Jimmy and his wife had just visited. And that's the rubbing from his memorial and the flag from his casket. And then in here, they have the prototype 
of the James Stewart statue here in town that we saw out front of the, well, right next door actually, the courthouse. Now this section is dedicated to his father's hardware store. And what's cool is they actually kind of showed me, you can see where it was right out the window in this room. So there's Jimmy back for a visit, hanging out in the hardware store with his dad. And this is the actual cash register. I mean, it was a family business, so Jimmy was probably expected to take it over, but he ended up, well, for one thing, his dad wasn't ready to give it up, and then it burned down, they rebuilt it, and then Jimmy went off and started having his own career and didn't want to take it over. But you can see on here all this stuff was from the hardware store because you can see the J.M. Stewart, Indiana right there. And then that one's upside down. So this is what the hardware store looked like after they rebuilt it. That's Jimmy on the right, his grandpa in the middle, and his dad on the left. See, it says J.M. Stewart Hardware. This is what it originally looked like before it burnt down. And you can see the railroad tracks that go right here. If you look out this window, you'll see that kind of gray building. Well, right here's where that railroad track was. So the original location of the hardware store is right across the street right there. So this weird kind of like Y-shaped wood piece was something that they had at the very top if you look in this Life magazine picture, it was at the very top of this. And they said when the bank bought the property that the, that the hardware store was on, they got that as well, that little thing with it, welcoming him back, and they donated it to the museum. And that building, you can see right out this window, right straight out there. Now this bench, that was in Jimmy Stewart's family home in the hallway of his mother and dad's home. And then here you can see they have this in here. And here's Jimmy's fire helmet, <laughs> his honorary fire helmet. And here he is wearing it when he came back here. And that is actually a photo of the fire. His father's hardware store's fire. And there he is with that accordion I told you about. Now here's a photo of his family home, and it still exists. We're going to go see it right after this. The pillars have been removed, and this museum actually has them in storage. They have so much stuff, they don't have room for it all. So they said, um, for me to let you guys know, they'll be rotating their exhibits. So it's always worth coming back for. And this amazing piece of the exhibit is all from his uh, stuff at Princeton. And it's all on loan from Princeton. You can see him wearing that hat right there. Them honoring him in the Princeton Weekly. He was part of the Triangle Club. His 1932 jacket. This is a fantastic museum. I highly recommend anybody to come check it out if you love Jimmy. So cool. So they actually have a theater in here that shows a documentary about his life if you want to know more. But you can actually purchase your name on one of these seats. So when you come in here, it'll say your name on that little gold marking. It's a nice way to donate. And look who's in the theater with you. Harvey. And Jimmy. You can't take it with you. That's the one that really, really kind of put him on the map. I remember hearing Henry Fonda once say that even though they're great friends, he would always be like annoyed because Jimmy Stewart didn't really even have to audition or anything to get parts. He seemed to just walk into an office and they gave him the part, whereas Henry would have to fight for parts. He made this one with Frank Capra, who eventually would also Direct Jimmy and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. And it's a wonderful life. So they told me not to open the doors because I'll set off the alarm, but look, the columns from the house are right here in the storage. 
that's kind of cool to see they cut them so if you're in the mood to support and buy some cool stuff they have a whole gift shop here let's check out what they have buy these in the gift shop we will definitely be back for some of their festivals this museum was absolutely awesome we are going to go over and see his boyhood home and call it a day Notice some handprints in the hallway, it's James Best. Roscoe P. Coltrane from Dukes of Hazard. As you go down the elevator, there's that V on top of the building that we saw in the museum. And his house is only about four blocks away from the museum and where his hardware store was. So let's head up there now, up Vinegar Hill. So we're taking Oak up to 7th. It's up in a little cul-de-sac up here. And I had read that it was a house overlooking Indiana, Pennsylvania, and it sure is right up here. Now I just noticed they named the street, this little, like, little street up here, right by his house after him as well. So he has a street up here and then one at the bottom of the hill, both named after him. There you can see it overlooking the city. And that was his home. Pretty cool. You can still see the pillars and everything. Well, they replaced the pillars, but you can see it still looks the same. James Maitland Stewart, war hero, acting genius. What's crazy is they said he was exactly who he was in real life on camera he was just that guy and he didn't want to be an actor growing up that wasn't something he was interested in that wasn't something he got into until after he had already went through college there's his boyhood home so cool to see and the neighbors across the street have a harvey how crazy <laughs> and on that note we are going to call it a day thank you all for watching hope you enjoyed this go check out that museum we'll see you next time have a great night and goodbye.